Hello, everyone. Uh, recent uh, discussions in, in the news and on the interwebs and so on about self-driving cars uh, got me to thinking about navigation. Now, I'm not going to talk about the issues that self-driving cars have um, and how to get a self-driving car to drive safely and not run into buses and things like that. Uh, that's a big topic on its own and quite frankly the information isn't in yet really. Navigation on the other hand is hard and it's something we do all the time at least when we're going from one place to another. Uh, now a lot of us these days, most of us with modern cars have navigation systems in the car. It just comes with modern cars uh, you have to pretty much special order a car to get one without all of this fancy uh, whiz-bang uh, technology in there in the infotainment system. Uh, but the navigation system say, in my car, which is a few years old, is actually pretty good. Uh, when it has accurate map information for both the destination and the starting point, it gives pretty decent directions. I used to get some pretty odd results out of it uh, early on, uh, a couple of map iterations ago, but things have improved. So I think they've improved their map data source, and I think there's also been some updates that have come along with the uh, regular maintenance, uh, although uh, nobody's actually said that there's been an update there may have been some software updates that were done as a matter of course. Now, uh, the navigation, as I said, works pretty well if the maps are accurate. It can't handle the situation where you're not on a road, though. Uh, it doesn't give you useful instructions when you're not on a road. It doesn't tell you that the road that you want is in a particular direction or anything like that. And it can't deal with detours particularly well, uh, where the detour isn't on a road. Uh, it, it, it can't deal with uh, things like, um, well, where the roads themselves have changed because it doesn't know about them. But it will recalculate the route if I take a, a, if I deviate from the actual path that it has chosen. Uh, so uh, at least it's pretty decent at that, and it assumes that I'm driving on a road, so and then I'm going to follow the route it's giving. So sometimes when I've de I've de uh, deviated from the route intentionally or otherwise, it doesn't notice that I've done that. Uh, for a little while, and that actually comes down to the accuracy of GPS locationing. Uh, the problem with the with GPS locationing is, uh, depending how many satellites you can see and where they happen to be in relation to you, the accuracy can be pretty good, down to like 30 centimeters or so, or it could be as bad as 30 meters or more, 300 meters potentially, if you got a really bad uh, uh, situation. And that means that uh, in, say, a, a city uh, downtown core with lots of tall buildings shading the sky or hiding the sky from you, uh, well, you can end up uh, with the GPS thinking you're two or three blocks over from where you are when you start out. And that obviously is a problem. Uh, so the navigation system, need, we need better locationing information somehow. Uh, how to improve that is questionable is uh, obviously satellites aren't going to work when things are shaded overhead. Uh, it, it's just, it can't. If you can't see the satellite, you can't know what's doing. You, you can't know where it is. You can't get the uh, signal you need to do the location uh, calculations. Uh, terrestrial installations have the same shading problem, but uh, in a different setup. Uh, so, you, you know, you, you've, you've got line of sight issues no matter what you do. Uh, and then, of course, there's dead reckoning, which is, uh, you know, just uh, I've driven, I've gone X time in what seems to be X direction at X speed. That means that I'm probably here. Uh, and that's kind of what the uh, nav systems are doing when they assume that you're on the road 
until they get a location fix that says that you can't be. It's a little bit of dead reckoning. And a lot of the navigation that humans do is based on uh, a very approximate form of dead reckoning, where, okay, I've been driving for half an hour, I'm probably almost to that next town or something like that. Uh, or my turn should be around here somewhere or something like that. Uh, but navigation with you know, these navigation systems, while they're great, they they have the serious drawback. They have to have accurate map information, and they have to know where you are. And they can't. They're not good at getting you unlost when they can't tell where you are. And then again, humans aren't particularly good at that either. Uh, we use a mental model of the world, and we use some basic uh, knowledge about how the world works. And it allows us to get unlost in a lot of circumstances. So like in a city, we can be reasonably certain that a road is going to go somewhere. Uh, so we go down the road and we come up to something that says we can't go any further. So we turn around and we go, back, go the other way on the road. And the road must go somewhere. Uh, and so we, we exploit that. Uh, if we're uh, in a back alley somewhere, we again know that it has to go somewhere so we can follow it around until we get to something that maybe we recognize or that we can use uh, or, or we get to something that has a sign that tells us something. And, and that's an important point too. The navigation systems can't read road signs. They can't read construction detour signs. They can't, they can't read notices saying the road is closed or anything like that. So uh, they, they uh, have that large chunk of information that's not available to them and it'll, it doesn't allow them to make good choices in some cases or any choice at all. Uh, it, uh, they often can't get you to a road. Uh, if you're not on one, they, they just can't direct you to a road. They, they are designed around the notion that you're driving on a road. And uh, obviously that's not always the case if you have uh, parked somewhere or something like that. Uh, and of course that's going to be critical for things like self-driving cars, that they'll be, they'd be able to navigate back to a road uh, if they're, say, in a parking space or something like that. So uh, obviously we're going to have to solve that problem. But the big problem we, we have to solve first is accurate information. And location information, well, there's smart people working on that because uh, obviously uh, there's a lot of things that depend on reasonably accurate location information other than driving. So people are working on that problem. Uh, Maps, people are also working on that problem, but it's much harder because it requires information coming from various sources to be synthesized into one whole map. And that information needs to be uh, set up in a way that uh, it can be used by navigation systems and so on. And one of the problems is a lot of navigation systems have their own proprietary format. They use everything in and you can't just go and grab map data from some random source that you know is accurate for where you're going to be and plug it in. You have to use the official map data from the official source or you're going to get into a fix. Uh, and quite frankly, while there is some value to the map information and there is some work required to compile it, it's not worth two or three hundred dollars a year to keep to get an updated map, especially when the information in the map in some is clearly not updated properly. I know there's streets in my area that have been there for five or six years now, and they're not in the most recent map. Uh, in my nav system, yet there's other streets that were put up 18 months ago that are. So if they're not going to be having accurate, up-to-date maps, even based on what the municipalities and uh, the road builders are making available to everybody else, and, you know, like seriously, when Google Maps has the up-to-date information and the official map source for the nav system doesn't, uh, that does give you pause. Now, Google does have vans out driving around on roads, and I think that's how they find some of these roads, is that they, 
they've got uh, information on uh, the aisles in uh, uh, parking lots. And again, my NAF system does too in a lot of cases. So, uh, I know there's another problem with the maps in my NAV system. and they, they include footpaths. And, well, I understand why footpaths would be useful to include. Uh, there's no way to turn them off. Uh, they, it doesn't seem like the, uh, the map system has a distinction between a footpath and an actual road where automobiles can be. Eh, you know, it's not a problem for the most part because in those in most cases you don't have a dense collection of footpaths and so on. But there's some cases where they actually interfere with figuring out your where you are if you just have the thing up as a map to uh, see what streets are coming up or something like that. And that's a useful feature in a lot of nav systems as well, even if you're not actively navigating with them. Still. Uh, there's got to be a better way to deal with the map situation, and I don't know what it is. Uh, I think first uh, we definitely need an open format that every every system is required to understand. If we start, if we had that, then I think we'd have a much better chance of cracking the map problem because then there would be the possibility. Of competition in the field but right now as I understand it there's one or maybe two people making these overall maps and that's it and everybody else is repackaging them so yeah hopefully somebody uh, manages to get a reasonably decent standard through and I'm not saying that the nav system makers can't have their own proprietary formats on top of it but they should be required to understand a particular open format so that people aren't dependent upon them for their map data and then they can wash their hands of that particular problem and say well you can get your map data from here or here or here or here or here uh, but um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's a good economic incentive for the people that actually build these things to do that because lock-in is a cash cow so uh, anyway uh, it, you know I, I'm complaining about uh, the maps and so on but still the nav system is uh, immensely useful uh, and it certainly takes some burden off navigating uh, if I'm in a reasonably unfamiliar area still uh, even with these fancy navigation tools, I think we need to put more emphasis in school and so on on actually navigating and using maps and reading maps. Uh, there was a little bit of that when I went through school, but as, as far as I can tell, it's completely gone because the youngins these days haven't got a clue how to read a map and figure out how to get from point A to point B just using a static map that can't give them directions. Uh, so, you know, it's not actually hard. That's the thing. If people would actually put an effort into it when they're relatively young and learn how it works, it's not actually hard. Uh, sure, you have to be able to relate what you're seeing, on the symbology on the map, with what's uh, out there in the real world, but... It's not hard, and it can be learned by most people. Uh, and quite frankly, people using GPS nav systems and so on should be reasonably uh, familiar with how, how maps link up with the, the real world anyway. Uh, but eh, people are lazy, I guess. Uh, uh, you know, it's... That, I guess that's that's really what it comes down to. People are lazy, and they just don't. If they don't have to learn how to do it, they don't. Uh, I, you know, I, I guess that's what it comes down to. But if we would teach people how to navigate with a map, uh, I'm not talking orienteering with a topological map, just a, even a street map. Uh, I think we'd have a lot fewer people getting lost, a lot fewer people being stupid and following their GPS instructions blindly down a boat ramp into a lake. And yes, that has happened. 
Uh, and that's another thing, reason why uh, we need to be careful with the navigation problem uh, when it comes down to uh, self-driving cars, actually. Uh, we need to ha have it so that this sort of thing cannot happen. Uh, you know, within any navigation system tied to an autonomous system. I mean, if human beings who can see the lake in front of them will drive into the lake, and they know better, or they should, what's a a, a, a computer computerized uh, vehicle operation system going to do? Because it when it doesn't actually understand the environment around it, so. That's, that's the other thing. Navigation's hard uh, to get right. And it's the corner cases that kill you, potentially, literally. Uh, humans can recognize when they've got a bad direction, a set of directions, if they actually think about it. So uh, that's why the GPS nav system in my car is useful. But I don't follow it blindly. Uh, oftentimes it'll come up with a route in an area I'm familiar with that is less ideal, although it does better now than it used to. And that might be down to better maps. Uh, the, uh, the autonomous car isn't going to recognize that stuff. So, uh, so while you might think we have really good nav systems, and they are pretty good, uh, they are really good compared to what we had 10 or 15 years ago, they're not good enough for us to use in other applications other than an advisory role. So uh, hopefully we'll solve that and I'm pretty sure if we put enough uh, resources at it, throw enough resources of the right kind at it, we'll solve it. And there's actually an economic incentive to have better and better nav systems anyway. So because uh, people like better and better systems, right? So, and the self-driving car people need them. So there's big money to be invested there as well. Anyway, that's my ramble on navigation systems and, and navigation itself, how it's hard. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of things I could ramble on about about it, but I'm not going to. I've been going long enough. So uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, Make sure to subscribe, and if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.